Okay. Jeff, if you can hit the record button and then we can get started. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Village of Woodbury work session on our preliminary budget. Will everyone please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag, United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. All right, Desiree, kick us off, please. Okie dokie. So the first page is the summary page. Basically, all the numbers carried over from the previous pages. The numbers will adjust based on the changes you make this evening. Um, the tax, I even did the tax brown breakdown for you guys per unit, which is what your Water 6, Valley Forge, and Consolidated Sewer is. And then your general fund and your consolidated water are ad valorem, which means per thousand assessment. But again, like I said, as we go through tonight, your estimated appropriations and your estimated revenues could change, which will then change the last column, which is amount to be raised by taxes. So the next page is the general fund. The top is, of course, the revenue. Uh, we have an addition already because I had forgotten about the franchise fees. So we're going to be adding in an A is the, the letter for the fund number. The code is 1170. Franchise fees is the name. And we are supposed to be getting 26000 a quarter. 27000 a quarter. I think it works out to be about 115, 115 grand per year. So that will be added to this as a separate line item. So that's going to be this new line item that we're adding in 150. The revenues come are a com combination of things from the highway department, um, the building department, my department, which is basically the catch-all. So I'm suggesting for interest on property taxes, we just got that number in today. So we're at we budgeted twenty-five thousand. We're we are going to be actually short. We brought in twenty-two thousand today. Um, so I'm suggesting making it 20,000. Again, that's guesstimating how many people are going to pay their taxes late. You don't want that. You want people to pay on time, but unfortunately, that doesn't always happen. So I'm suggesting 20,000, which is a $5,000 decrease over last year. Uh, your sales tax, uh, we are already at five. As of the end of February, we were at 580,000. We did get another payment earlier this month. So I'm suggesting raising that to 870 because historically it has been pretty good. Um, even last year, with which was you know a COVID year, we brought in 870. So I think 870 is a safe number for revenue. If you think it's too high or too low, let me know and we can adjust. Um, clerk fees is basically and really only the money we make when we have photocopies done whether it be a single copy we do here or if we send it out and have a map copied from the printer based on FOIL requests, there is a matching expense for that later within my budget. Uh, fire inspection fees, um, as you know, Mike Pinella can't be here tonight, so if you have any questions, I'll do my best to answer them. Um, Vic also sat in for that budget, so he could possibly help as well. And if we can't, I can get you guys answers tomorrow. He's suggesting the 17000 for that. He pretty much, since we have that new program that you guys authorized them to buy last year, they have a way of tracking all of it, and that he feels that that's a safe number for that. We are currently at, oh, bless you, 16000 We do have a couple more months left, so we will exceed 17000 this year. 
Vital statistics, that is a wash, is a matching expense for that. That has to do with death certificates. There's no reason to budget money for that <coughs> until it actually comes in and we can recognize it. Public works is the money that we get from the county for uh, the highway department to plow and maintain Dunderberg and Gregory. Correct. Yes as well as a reimbursement for the town building and grounds department for the salt that they utilize out of our highway department. <coughs> Zoning fees is also, the, that's the amount recommended by the building department. Escrow deposits have a matching expense, so we don't budget anything for that, and that's just to recognize the money that's spent from the escrows for planning, zoning, and any fees for you guys that people post to offer your consultant costs. So that number will always match the expense and the revenue. If I'm going too fast, stop me. I'm just trying to, and if I'm being too basic, tell me to hurry up. Okay, planning board application fees, that was formerly called informal, informal work sessions, which they no longer have, and now you guys have created a planning board app fee, so we renamed that, and that's what that is. Transportation services, other government, that's the amount of money that we collect for all the other municipal departments and ambulance that use our gas. Um, so of course that did go up a little bit because we do anticipate gas increasing. We don't make any money on that. It's a wash, but Rob bills them directly what they use. Other home and community services, that's a community development grant if we ever get any money for that. Interest and earnings, of course, interest, as you could sadly see in 1920, we did awesome on interest, but then COVID came and we've been steadily going down and down and down and down. Um, we budgeted 5,000, we're not gonna make that this year, so that's why I dropped it to three. Rental use of building, we don't do that anymore. That's what the rent that we used to get for renting this room, but since we made it a village hall, it's no longer able to be rentable. <coughs> building permits, that is also something, the, the amount that the building inspector recommends in his department. Um, just so you know, we changed how we collect building permits now. It used to be that you would submit your application with your building department check, with your check for your permit, and it would be held until your building permit is issued. Problem with that is months would go by and the check wouldn't get deposited, then I would deposit and it would bounce and blah, 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 blah. So now we're depositing checks day received and if somebody wants to withdraw their permit instead of just giving them ch their check back like we used to, even though we spent time reviewing the application, we'll now hold back an administration fee because we did spend time reviewing the application before they withdrew it. And that's new. And that's new, so the building department fees for the next couple of years may fluctuate a little bit because depending on the applications coming in. Mm -hmm. Uh, street opening permit, we can't really budget for that because we don't know how many road cuts Rob's going to get for that. So we're putting zero and then we'll just recognize it as it comes in. <coughs> Permits other, that's your towing permits. You can't always, like this year we, we've already got 16.5. Last year we only did 13.5, so it all depends. We did have somebody close, so you don't know who's going to do what. So I guess, guess estimated 15, that's 3,000 a piece, so that's for five towing permits. That include the large towing one that we don't have? I didn't, we only have one for that, so I didn't put that in, and it's just in case it's, it, he doesn't do it again, or okay. whatever the case may be. Um, so just, I mean, it's a revenue, so you don't want to over, over budget a revenue. Yeah, agreed. Fines and forfeited bail, um, that's false alarm fees that the town collects on behalf of whether there's a fire department false alarm, as well as the fees that get charged by the Justice Court for any building department fines or violations that are issued. So again, that's a fluctuating number because you don't know how many that would be. Forwarders of deposits, you can't budget for that because that's anybody who doesn't claim their escrow. So we try trying not to write the penny checks anymore. So Ooh, wow. we're at 13 cents right now. Woohoo! Yeah. Uh, sale of equipment, another one you can't budget for because you don't know what you're gonna sell or if you're gonna sell anything. Insurance recoveries, that's in case we have accidents, which of course we don't wanna have. Previous year's expenditures, again, unknowns, gifts and donations, same thing. State aim, we are now able to put that money, we, we used to never budget for that because that was always an unknown, whether we were gonna get it or not, but now I believe uh, earlier this year, last, late last year, Sco Senator Scoofus got it permanent, so I put it in. Mortgage tax, I'm bumping up because as you could see, we usually do pretty good with mortgage tax, we still have one more check coming. So I think 350 is still a conservative number, but I, I wouldn't recommend going higher than that. Yeah, housing prices are gonna drive that up. Yeah. And state aid, of course, those you can't budget for. And chips, what we're gonna do, Rob and I discussed it, because we used to put a number in there, 
and then we have to do a modification to recognize it once we get the actual number because it's always like to the penny. We're just going to recognize it when it comes in and then it's going to have a matching expense later, you'll see. And that's your revenues. Anybody? Questions? On any of the terms as well? Nothing? Anybody in the public? So it's not a public hearing. <laughs> So village board expenses. And one question. Yes. So fire inspection fees. Fire inspection fees. I know Mike's not here. Yes. But how is he coming up with 17? Fire Shouldn't inspection that be higher? fees, 17,000. Well, it it, it, the way he made it sound, it, I'm trying to remember exactly what he said. I think they're on a schedule, and some it's every other year for some of them, and it depends on whether some stores open or some stores don't open okay. or think it's a fluctuating thing so okay. I think it's a little low myself Tara because like I said we're at 17 now um, and we did we did 24 last year but we only did 11 the year before that so yeah I mean I think it's maybe smart to make a note that next year if it's high again then we shouldn't go low okay Unless you want to increase it. No, I mean, I wouldn't do that because it's okay. revenue. Very good. A justification from, from okay, so village board expense is your first grouping. Um, do you see that? I'm sorry, did someone? Yep. Okay. Yep. So yep. the first line I'm obviously your salaries. There's no proposed increase for you for you guys. Sorry. So that would be four times the amount of 8000 uh, equipment is 15000 which we did budget this year, but we're going to carry it over to next year, and that's for the smart boards that we're going to put up definitely on this wall. I'm a little concerned about that wall because it's a temporary wall. I don't know if it'll be able to pull it. Um, yeah, but definitely on this wall. Um, we, I have no idea how much those are. It's not my area expertise, so I just carried over the same number from last year. Yeah, we'll be able to do something with that. It, it's something that, you know, bringing back the live meetings, we're trying to do both, a hybrid, so we're going to need something in the room for allowing people to participate <clears throat> remotely as well. Yes, but I don't know if 15,000 is too much, too little, just right, Goldilocks, I don't know. We'll find out. We'll find out. Okay. So videographer, I did $75 a meeting times 24 meetings because you do two meetings a month. Office supplies, you guys don't really use a whole lot of that stuff. No. Awards and recognitions, that's for plaques for people who are leaving and the employee appreciation luncheon. Grant writer is cut because we are now splitting that with the town half and half. So we pay six months, they pay six months. Late fees on invoices we can't budget for because we won't know. Hopefully there is none. Uh, revitalization, I just carried over the 5000 Y'all haven't spent any of that yet. Um, I don't know if you're going to. Yeah. Well, that's the question. So you to chair it. Do you need more money budgeted, or you want to just leave it at five for now, and we'll deal with it in the new, you know, deal with it in the budget season? I don't know if we can deal with it without putting it in. Well, we we, can, always we can always do a modification, but okay. I, I don't, you know, we're because trying, we're, this budget is so tight, we don't really have a spot to take it unless we have a surplus in revenue that we didn't know by before May 31st. Um, no, it was supposed to be for events that were promote the revitalization, but, you know, COVID kind of killed that vibe, so I think. Well, you do have a line item for event insurance separately. No, not for insurance, okay. for, the, for event cost. Oh, okay. Like a parade or some other sort of event for the, for the, trying to, for the downtown. We never got to it because of COVID and everything else, so I think it's a safe. Right. Right. <laughs> so we're going to leave it for now at five. And if we have to, we could you use a budget modification later. Everybody in agreement? Yeah, I'd like to do something this year. The only thing I would throw out and so the Senator Scoofus grant was for a hundred thousand. But your costs for everything that you guys put in far exceeded that a lot. Uh, the electric alone was Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> was quite over um, what you guys estimated. So I don't know if you wanted to put money here to to pay for the, everything that's above and beyond that? The, the estimates when we when they did the grant application, they didn't have estimates for the electrical. I had Dan Lux do the estimates for the electrical, and it was. They did have estimates, but very. Yeah, but they were not well, even close. Right. 
And how far over? About 70? Yeah. 70 over? Yeah. Yeah, yeah well, we're going to have to scale gonna that to, back. <laughs> you're going to have to... We have to scale back. Dig uh -huh. to get where you got to go. Yeah, to put you those know. special lights in. He has to dig up the sidewalks, run the power, tap in somewhere. Now, here's the only thing. I don't expect that grant to come in till, till the next budget cycle. Right. So okay. we could leave this alone for now and then deal with it down the road if we need, okay. need to. Yeah, if I that's the case, then we should finalize that plan, and if we had to scale it differently or look for something else. Yeah. Right now it's in their laps. It's been all submitted. Yeah. Um, yeah. We worked the first eight days of the year yeah. to get it all in on time, and then they had to, we had to get quotes and things like that. So no it's problem. been submitted. I, I haven't received any updates on that. So that is your budget for the village board. <coughs> the mayor has his own budget. Again, his salary line is not changing. Um, and he, we got a laptop for him this year, so there's no equipment for him next year. We bought business cards, so there's no office supplies that would be needed. So that's the mayor's budget. Uh, audit, tax collector, and budget officer. So as you know, we don't have a designated tax collector anymore. It's been absorbed into my office, so there is no salary for that anymore or telephone expense. The only thing that there is is a small office supplies that are just for tax collection purposes, postage for ta just for tax collection, excuse me. Uh, bill printing, the county prints our bills and we have to pay them for that. And then the salary for budget officer, which has not changed. And so Claudia's salary is in with the clerk? Claudia's treasurer? in my office, okay. yes, clerk treasurer. The reason we had a separate one was because if you remember, it was just me. Mm -hmm. And I didn't think it was right for me to spend the money and collect the money, you know, checks and balances. Mm -hmm. So that's why we had a separate tax collector. But now that there's three people in the office, there's more checks and balances. Mm -hmm. So Claudia collects all the tax money. Okay, so village clerk treasurer. So the salaries for the three individuals in my office, me, Jessica, and Claudia. Uh, we don't need any equipment. The FOIL request, that's that matching one that I told you you'd see from my clerk fees earlier in revenues. Office supplies is your general stuff. Checks, we go, you guys write a lot of checks, so we have to buy checks regularly and folders and envelopes and whatnot. Travel and transportation to travel, that's for uh, Jess to attend an annual school for records management, law book supplements. You guys like to adopt laws, <laughs> in case you didn't know. But I did save a lot of money on that because when that, not last year, you didn't do a whole lot the year before, you did a whole lot. I saved them and submitted them all at once. So it was cheaper, they didn't have to re-index every time. Mm -hmm. So I try to do that to get you guys some, save some money. Thank you. Uh, websites contractual, so. 1500 a year, school. Is that to run it or is, that's just is that, maintenance. Is that just the maintenance? That's just the maintenance of the website itself. And then we do the domain name every three or four years. Because we need to kind of improve that website. So that, that, we have it. Do you want me to? You can, but what we can explain Claudia yeah. and what we're doing with Claudia. So here's the story why that number went up a bit. So Claudia, instead of, she's going to have set hours here. What, what was going on was that she would do the minutes for the zoning board meetings, board. planning board, excuse me, and then come here and do the minutes during the work day. So we're gonna separate that out where she will get paid for the planning board and have to do that on her time, but there'll be more time for her here in the office. So that 20 hours a week, that's 20? 29. 29, that's dedicated to her. Part of her new responsibilities are going to be to update the website. So that'll be part of her job description, if you want to call it that. So it's just a smarter wheel, I guess, you know? Yeah, so she'll get a stipend for planning board, which is what we used to do. Mm -hmm. And then when <coughs> previous planning board secretary retired, the mayor at the time said, let's just do an hourly rate, which made sense, except for now planning board minutes are, are a bear, and it takes quite some time. So she's spending a lot of her time in the day doing that instead of stuff mm -hmm. that she could be doing. So. But do we have anything for potentially, <clears throat> besides, you know, putting things on the website, updating the website where we can do. That's gonna become one of her responsibilities. Yeah, like electronic submissions and everything else would make the lives of the planning and zoning boards and everything so much easier if we can do online submissions, online forms. Um, the, you'd have to talk to the building department to see how they want that done because there's spe specific things they have to submit mm -hmm. with all their applications and they like to sit and go over all that with the applicant when they bring it in, rather than going back and forth. They spend too much time going back and forth via email or electronically, whereas if they come in with it, 
they can sit down with the checklist and make sure everything's there. Because they won't accept an application unless it's complete. And if they're submitting it electronically and it's not complete, then it st stays in limbo. And we probably need to have a conversation with the webmaster mm -hmm. and make sure that it's... No, no, I get it. I'm just yeah. saying we got to start looking at things. Like There's software. But that's yeah, and I think she does have th things that get emailed to her, so they are submitted electronically. Um, You'd have to check to see how they do it right now. They might already be doing what you're asking. No, no, just yeah. trying to get into the right. 18th century. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so office supplies, travel, website, advertising, and community maintenance. OK. So your consultants, again, these are just numbers that I, get, I put in there based on past experience. Um, your legal fees have been quite low this year. Um, which is pretty nice, so I did reduce that. I don't know if I would go much lower, because, but that's up to you guys. How are uh, they so low compared to prior? I'm not entirely sure, to be honest with you. I mean, they, they she, she's, she is, huh? I'm not deaf. <laughs> Is there a it, lag? Is there, they are, there is a lag. They are, they are a month and a half behind with their billing, but that's just how they do their billing. Um, Okay. Honestly, I, I you oh, know, just expecting it's sixty thousand dollars of bill. I mean, it's fine, but I, I no, yeah. I can't see that happening. I just, you know, okay. They bill what they bill. I, I, I can't, you know. Yeah, no, 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 absolutely. Just um, planning board. So a little bit. Let me just give you a little bit about the planning board. So, you guys, because you are adopting a lot of laws, a lot of your laws require referral to the planning and zoning board. Planning and zoning board, unless they have any type of litigation, really shouldn't have any consultant costs because they're all paid completely by the applicants. Right. Mm -hmm. So because you've been referring these to the planning and zoning board, they've been incurring consultant costs. So we created new line items in this budget to account for that. So if you look at that in 1420.405 attorney slash VB laws by planning board, so whenever we, you refer laws to the planning board, that's where that's got to get charged. So it's not charged to the planning board expense and it's separated from your expense, so you have an idea of what you need to do laws, what it costs you. And there's a matching one in the engineer column, and there's a matching one in the planning planner column as well. Um, so I guess the planning board chairperson put money in there for a just in case. Uh, again, that would be for any litigation that's not covered by our insurance. Um, most of it is, but I guess sometimes there could be not. Zoning board attorney, that is also a number provided by your zoning board chair. I, uh, I personally think it's high, but based on you know past costs, I would make it 15, but that's up to you guys. And it's for the same reason? I, I don't know where she, I don't know how, what she came, how she came up with her number. Um, I'm recommending 15 based on past mm -hmm. experiences. Like two, three years ago, we only spent 13. Last year, we only spent 12.7. This year, we're only up to nine. There is a couple more meetings coming up. Maybe when you go back to live, you might incur, I don't know, more costs because of them traveling to the meeting instead of. I think you should reduce it. All right, everybody okay, okay with reducing yeah. it down to 15? 15. 15, yeah. yeah. Okay. Labor, you don't have any negotiations, so if something comes up, it would just be a budget mod needed. Annexation litigation, so you do have an annexation petition before you. I, I don't know where it's at. We haven't talked about it quite some time. I don't know if you wanted to put something in there in anticipation of anything or just do a budget mod if we need it. So I didn't put anything in there because hopefully there will be no litigation for that. Yeah, it's a back and forth. Sorry, I saved paper. No, no, no. The page is backwards. I was telling you. Oh. Three and four are backwards. So the, the copy machine. I'm sorry. Hey, got it. Okay. Don't apologize. Don't apologize. No. Okay. Uh, engineer contractual. I also lowered that from our current budget. We we currently budgeted seventy five thousand. I lowered it to fifty because you really haven't used a whole lot of it. Uh, last year you did because of um, space side. Yeah. That cost us quite a bit of money. Uh, this year, you're only at 20000 and change. I, I'm sure we're going to get a couple more bills later, but that's going to be charged to water sewer for all that work that they're doing. So you really haven't anything done for you guys. That's so this not, is above and this is apart from everything with the hydrogeologists. This is that. just okay. things that wouldn't get charged to water and sewer. Got it. 
Um, same with the planning board expense. I, I, you know, that submitted by the planning board chair. Consultant for Village Hall expansion. I'm assuming what you guys approved last week isn't going to get done all in this current fiscal year. So I put half in this, half of it in next fiscal year. Um, that's for your uh, architect mm -hmm. and the engineer you just approved last meeting. When they move out, the idea is to make this more of a viable meeting space. So that's where the architect would come into that. Yeah, so what we're gonna, the plan is when they move out, I don't know, I think I talked to some of you about this, but when they move out, then you're just gonna have Jessica and Claudia and me here, and a lot of times Jessica by herself. So we're going to turn the window, it's in front of my desk in the corner there, into an ATM kind of thing. So no one would have to come into the building. They can do all the transactions that way, so there's a security to it. We can let people in the building if need be, but most people just come in, they want to pay their water bill or tax and leave. There'd be no reason for them to come in because the building department won't be here anymore. And nobody comes and sees us unless they're paying their water bill and tax bill. So we're going to try to make it an easy in and out kind of thing. So, and it's but a security. Also have the ability to come in. Yes, we can, okay. let, we can let people in ourselves. They okay. wouldn't be able to come in unless we let them in. The door would stay locked because, you know, there's times when, when a lot of us are here by ourselves, we get up and go to use the ladies' room and come out and someone's standing there. That doesn't violate anything because this is a public... Building, no, right? no, okay. because we can unlock the door and let okay. them in if need be. I got it. Um, I don't think you lock them in. <laughs> no, I, I don't know how that works. When. Okay, so when the building department moves out, this space here is going to be divided in half. The back half over here is going to be my records room, which right now is in complete disarray. The front half is going to be a conference room, so when you guys have an executive session or when the planning board or zoning board need to have an executive session, they would sit in there and have a conference room where my records room slash building inspector offices right now will be become the mayor's office. And then because we're gonna be living at that corner with a dry, with a ATM, I don't know if it's gonna be drive through, we're still playing with the idea. That's gonna be all of me and the two girls. Thoughts? You didn't As like? we get close, we can modify You're expanding your also. inside room over no. to here, you're saying? No, my, no, no, nothing's being expanded at all. Every, <laughs> the footprint's staying exactly the same. Just We're just going to put a temporary Different. wall in the head because records have to be locked up because of confidentiality and the security of them. Mm -hmm. So we're going to put a temporary wall in the middle here of this section here. The back section is going to be all records. The front section is going to be a conference room. Which right now, so you know, well, we're not back at regular meetings, but whenever there's a planning board, attorney client or anything like that, they're basically heading into the kitchen right now. Or they head into our office. Right. So, so we're trying to make the flow more productive. Because as you see, I mean, you guys have been in there. And then this way, when you guys come in, you won't even have to go into our office. We're going to have everything in the conference room for you. So your vouchers will be there, your mail will be there. You guys can spread out, do what you got to do so, instead of coming out here. <laughs> Bless, Bless you. Okay, so planner for the planning board. Again, that is um, from the planning board chairman and traffic consultant for the planning board. Honestly, I don't know why there's a number there because that's paid for by the applicant, not by us. But he didn't provide a reason as to why he put a number there. So. I wasn't there. We don't usually bring them in because they have full-time jobs during the day, so. Um, my personal thing, every, every year, even the current and the previous chairman always put money there. We always put it at zero and told them we could do a modification if necessary, and we never had to do a modification. I'm good with that. Zero? zero. Yeah, just zero it out. <clears throat> as soon as I say that, we're going to need traffic consultant. Yeah, of course. Right? Yeah, but again, that's usually paid for by the applicant, so. Okay, so records management supplies, that's boxes, folders, labels, everything and anything to do with records management. And then central government. So, telephone expense, there is none because, and you'll see later, there's another line item. We did, a, we did the whole network system up here with the telephones where we're all tied in together with the town so we can just inter-department call that we separated to a different line item. That's payroll prep. We switched from a program that was going obsolete to ADP, so it does cost a little bit more, but we're getting more services for that. Real estate taxes, I just kept the same. I, I don't, you know, because our year is a split year, 
I don't know if the town taxes are gonna or county taxes are gonna increase at all come January. Um, you really don't pay anything. General fund is mostly the water and the sewer because that you still have to pay because you do you know that's a per unit charge kind of mm -hmm. thing. General electric. Um, that's the electric for this building. So we're currently at 27,000. So I did increase it based on current usage. Yeah, we freaking went to 61 last year. What, the, what was that? Uh, that's buildings and grounds, not electric. Oh, sorry. That's okay. Uh, buildings and grounds is the cleaning of the, of the building. Um, any repairs to anything in the building upstairs or, or the downstairs area that we're responsible for, so the urinals, any lights that have to be repaired. Um, That's not snow removal and all that, right? No, 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 we don't pay for that. Okay. So based on current usage, we're at 28 now, so I put it up to 30. The reason it was so high last year is we redid a lot of the AC, AC HVAC system. So the condenser went on one of the... Yeah, I remember. Well, that and that's also on the next line item too. Yeah. But that we're going down because that since we did all those major repairs, our, we haven't been. So I did chop that down by ten thousand. Shredding is a company that comes and does our our shredding of our documents that we just can't throw away because it has bank account information or or whatnot on it. Uh, alarm system. Remember last year we we mm -hmm. found out we didn't have a fire alarm system in this building, yes. yep. which is fun since we're a firehouse. <laughs> so now we do. <laughs> that's why. Yeah, that's why. <laughs> so now we do, and that's the the annual monitoring of that. Uh, moving expenses. So when we do move the building department down to the Osweiler building, if we do, of course we're going to incur some expenses for that. So I guesstimated twenty five thousand. What did we spend last year on that? What did we budget we, last year on that? No. We didn't spend anything. We didn't spend anything last year. The year before, we spent 63, that's and that's when doing. we had the doors, you know, the temporary room put in, and we moved the building department from what was town hall to here and all that. So again, as I do every year and try to do every year, I'm asking for a part-time custodian. I think... I'm leaving it in there, but... He's leaving it in there because every time he says something, I said, well, if we had a custodian. Yep. <laughs> and he goes, oh, if we have a custodian, oh. If you want to cut it again, I mean, it's just, you know, Andrew was climbing on a chair today to change the clock because. Because that's what I do. That's what he does. For my residence. But we do have, you know. Proper clock management. Stop. Is, so is, that, light, so is that light in the stairway still out? <laughs> oh, so, so. I'm just saying. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So this buildings and ground contractual we added last year because we had thoughts of maybe contracting with the town to see if we could have someone do that for us, but then we never did anything, so it's still there as a ghost. <laughs> uh, telephone, that's what I was talking about earlier, how we have now one system, one phone system for all of our phones, which apparently is now obsolete, so we may have some expenses I don't know yet we're still playing back and forth with Frontier and uh, the town because the town's the lead agency on that central printing that's for paper supplies central postage is kind of self-explanatory data processing that's all of our IT services I know we're low right now but we have all the IT services we have to pay for that fifty thousand dollar infrastructure grant that we got um, that has to be ser put on a server and whatnot. Plus, when we move the building department down there, that's going to need to be a server down there also because right now we're sharing a server. Um, that incorporates the cost of all that? Well, yeah, because he charges a block. We, we, we buy block hours from him. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> I, I'm, okay. I'm confident that should be enough. Uh, unallocated insurance, mm -hmm. that's seems to be about the norm, what we're paying. The event insurance, I have that in there again. We haven't used any. I don't know what you want to do with that. I think we just leave it alone. Leave it alone. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Municipal dues are kind of, cons kind of um, consistent. Purchase of land. 
Andrew? Oh, so we put half a million dollars in there. So what we're looking at is potentially if we have land that we would look to purchase, whether that's Hazard Lane or some of the other things we've discussed, the money is already budgeted for. So instead of going into the reserve fund, I guess. Well, yeah, you don't want it. We don't really have a whole lot in the reserve fund as far as we don't actually have any money in reserve fund for purchasing land. Um, is that anywhere near enough? It's not, but I don't think. Yeah. You can maybe enough for that. two lots that we are talking about. Yeah. Where does the centralized mass fall then? There. That's in there. So it, it's not enough. Let's just say that. Let's just call it what it is. So if the Central Valley Firehouse can <clears throat> fund something that we do purchase, that'll eat up a lot of it. So what I'm what I'm thinking is probably that and maybe one lot, one parcel of land that we can afford with that number without dipping into the reserve fund. Now, if you think we need to increase it or just leave it alone for now, yeah. is what I need to hear. I would leave it. You don't know. Yeah. And I'm not willing to really go higher than that. Okay. CJ? Jesus. I'm right. I just yeah. we'll save the parcels one one lot at a time. Well, just remember when you buy parcels, a municipal, when you buy when a municipality buy parcel, you have to buy it with a reason in, yep. in mind. You can't just buy it just to buy it. Right, yeah, yeah. So, oh, well, just there's an FYI. An for and you. if we have to, we'll sell fire department T-shirts. Oh my God! They have to say Woodbury Fire Department. Yes, yes. <laughs> that's right. And then your APTA payroll tax is you know. Because we need to support the metro people who. Yeah. Okay. So Fired. this one sing one more question that that thirty we have in here for the buildings and grounds. Buildings and grounds. Yes. Um, is that going to be enough? Because I think we should start looking at some planned maintenance. Like you know, this room alone probably needs a good paint job and you know whatnot. Well, that would be part of what we're talking about with the with the renovations. But here. that that's labor. Yeah, but. Well, actually, you're, of course, so getting close to summertime, yeah. but it, when, when the, I wouldn't say now, but probably when the parks close, you're building, the town's building and grounds department is dying to do stuff for you guys because of all the things that Rob does for them. Thank you, Rob. So Thanks, them coming in and painting our offices is something that they very <laughs> easily do. Great, absolutely. I mean, move on. If it's something you want me to try to get them to do before the parks open, I can speak to the no, no, director. Perfect. But no, it's perfect. They're going to start getting ready to get the parks do some, We got to do some sprucing up. Right. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean that's what the building, the building and grounds want to demolish Osweiler for you. They want to do whatever they can do to thank mm. Rob for everything he done for them. All right, thanks, thanks, Rob. Thanks, thanks Rob. <laughs> Yeah, we can get, you know, we got to donate the TV. I was getting jealous. We got the Smithsonian to donate that to. That's fire department. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to stop you there. For a okay, feel free to. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> Jeff went out. Jeff went out and got some pizza. So for those that are hungry, go grab a slice, two slices, and then come back and we'll begin the fire department. I need to eat. Go ahead, Vic. If there's no plates there, let me know. Go get the kidding me. I just sent them out for you. Yeah, Vic, you need to go out with the Go eat a slice. Yeah. Okay, good. Are there napkins, CJ? All right. What's up? Anybody else would like a slice of pizza? It's all for me. I got money. How much do we all have money? Tell him to put on his voucher. Hey. Jeff, come over. And Jeff? I just got to put something in my stomach. I'm good.
think it's on. Okay. okay, so fire department budget is up. You want to just go? You want me to go? What do you want to do? You can go if you want. Okay. I mean, I, I, yeah, any questions I'll, I guess I'll address. Okay. So the salary for the personnel service stayed the same. Long term equipment, we decreased by 50, but we added a new line item called fire department equipment support vehicles. So do you want to explain your vision for sure. that? Sure. Yeah. So we have a current brush truck now. Uh, that is essentially undersized. So when it's full of water, our tank in the back is full of water, it cannot, cannot haul our UTV. So the thought is, it's a skid unit that goes back in the, that goes in the back of a Ford one, I think it's 250. So the idea is to take that skid unit out of that 250, use that existing truck as our utility, which we don't have right now, a, a, a pickup truck utility, and get a new chassis that would then have that skid mounted unit you know, mounted in the back, and it would be sized to take all the uh, the UTV. So we're looking at like a Ford 350 or 450 chassis. So that's the idea for that. Any questions? Okay. All right, moving right along. So that's what I'm, so that's be the 105,000 total. Is that why they split on two lines? It's 86,000. 36450 for long term equipment. Right. Which oh, I'm sorry. I have a detailed list of what he yeah. plans on getting if you'd like me to go through it. Helmets, gloves, hoods, geometers, yeah. hose, computers. <laughs> exactly. Et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Um, Chris is pretty good. He really submits a detailed and then as the bills come in I usually cross them off throughout the year and whatnot. Plus he has to do the equipment <laughs> request also, so um, SCBA replacements, that's a, every, just like how we have a replacement program with Rob, we replacement program for some of the things with the fire department. <coughs> so that would be to replace uh, six of those. Are we doing this year? Every no year. expense yet. Hmm? We're doing this year still? The yeah, yeah, yeah they were the ordered. Invoice is just delayed. Mm -hmm. Equipment delays like everything else. Same thing with the radio equipment. Mm -hmm. We were placing... 20 pagers and three radios, and that's, we said we do that. I think this is the last year you said for this one, right? For the radios, pagers radios. will be. Uh, pagers, right. And radios will be maintenance one or two, but they won't, they won't be the three. Uh, turnout gear, we have nothing in there because of the grant. We have the $40,000 in the grant to spend, so we figured use that instead of raise the taxes for it. So yeah, we have till November. Yet. So what okay. the plan is in June to November, we'll get, we'll do that. Is order. there also a delay on that? It is, but if we order right in June, we, we just had the guy come size, it should, okay. it'll be in, yeah. Right, so what he has budgeted this year will be spent, you guys just yep. did sizing, yeah. right? Yep. Yeah. Because if we don't use it by November, we lose it, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, right. but he yeah. has been told to, okay. Got it. to spend it, so he's spending it. Yeah. Um, so that's, so when we, the PPE grant, that's where that line item will be ex recognized when we have it. Um, I was just jumping down to the big ones. Uh, the radio repair and service line item were decreasing by twelve thousand dollars because. Yeah. So last year we went with a, a service plan with Goose Town. So what it was is they covered every piece of equipment we had, and if it was damaged, we would just send it back. And if it was, you know, usually it was under the warranty, it would be repaired. We found that over the past year, we never spent what that actually was was worth if that makes sense i think we spent five thousand out of the 17 that we paid so it didn't pay for itself so what we did this year is just decrease and go back to sort of a pay as you go so if a radio breaks or, or a pager breaks we just send it in and we're confident that that'll never approach that seventeen thousand dollar number so i think it's just smart to kind of go back and save some money right but we're in a contract till june we yeah yeah right to the june. to the budget year yep mm -hmm. um the, and every, you know, everything else pretty much stayed the same or went down? Went down, yeah, I think, yeah, I mean, the little ones sort of went a little bit up or a little bit down, but I think overall we were down like 70 some thousand, uh, which is about 15%, I think. So mm -hmm. I think that's been trending on how we've been spending operations and equipment. So I, I think that makes sense for us as we discussed. 
Yeah, and some things that he you did have budgeted, like you originally had another fourteen thousand in four four eight operations for foam. Mm -hmm. But since you have hardly spent any of that, we told you to buy that this year. Yep, and that'll be done. Correct. Yeah. <clears throat> so your budget wasn't altered so much, except is it being told to spend it this year instead of right. next year? Questions? What about the truck? Truck. The truck we would not. That comes out of your reserve fund. Right. Is, are we putting away though? Every year, that's at the very last of okay. your budget. Yeah, we always do 150 a year. Is yeah. He has about 900 in reserve fund right now. And what do you need for a new? 1.2. Yeah, for a ladder, for an aerial. So that's what's nice at. about that is we when we order it we put half down. And okay. then when we receive it, we put the other half down, which usually bridges two fiscal years. Right. So we'll know an exact number to budget for once. So if he orders it this coming fiscal year, then we'll know for the next no. fiscal year the exact number to put in. Yeah, so everybody knows Chris has got a committee set up already yep. to look into this. So hopefully in the next few months, he will put the order and We're looking at probably like yep. an 18-month lead time. Yeah, right now, unfortunately, because yep. just Never. the way things are going. <laughs> yeah, okay. some steals and everything. But at this point. I, I know you can't even find one, but that is the plan, I think. I would say in the next month or two, we'll, okay. we'll get something together. To That's hopefully. fine. The good news is we just went through this, I think, four years ago. So we, at least on this end, we should be pretty smooth. So. Okay. There are big prices, but we plan accordingly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then usually mm -hmm. whatever the reserve fund, we don't use office awesome reserve funds. We're constantly replenishing it. Mm -hmm. And then whatever is above and beyond, then we do the tax levy or the fund balance, depending where we are financially at the time, which is great that it spreads two years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, that's all I got for fire, unless you want to talk about any of the little tiny ones. No. Okay. Great mm -hmm. job. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Chris. I just want to say one man. thing. Go Hokies. <laughs> <laughs> we just cut his budget another 10 grand. <laughs> okay. Building department. So I don't know how many of you are fully aware of the personnel changing that's coming up this next coming fiscal year. You have one employee who is retiring, <clears throat> so we have to replace that person. You have one who's currently part-time who's going full-time, which would be Jen. And Maria is going from hourly to salary. And I was asked to budget a part-time fire inspector. And that's in the 65? That's in that 465. Uh, All of that is in that 465. Yeah. So that's why it's up 65,000? Um, I can give you those detailed numbers if you'd like. Tyra shaking her head. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Chris. And then what would be the offset? So for hiring a fire inspector, what's the offset in the revenue? It wasn't my idea, so I haven't done an analysis of that, so has I don't he? I don't know. Has has Mike? I, oh, probably not. Because it's not in any numbers here. So yeah. that's a part time position, right? It's, yeah. It would be part time, that's what I was told to do. Yeah. And it has to be part time. No, no. I yes, if it's not, it, it would have to be a, uh, when it's part-time, you don't have to hire off the list, mm -hmm. but if you ever make that position full-time, you would, and you would, and whoever's in the position could lose their job. Okay, so I'm going to say out numbers. People may be like, oh my God, you're telling people what people make, but we're, tax, we're taxpayer funded, so it's all public information. So there you go. <laughs> So for John, his projected base salary would be 76.7, and that's just what his current rate is, and then the 3.5%, which is what everybody gets. Uh, Mike Pinella, he'll go to 87,975. 87, uh, Jen be going full time, that's 52.5. Alex is at 68.1. Maria Rubio would be going from hourly, hourly to salary, which would be a flat 80,000. Marion's only going to be here for a couple of months, so I got her in there for 16.2. Person who will take over for Marion will be 50,900. I'm just averaging them, rounding numbers here, obviously. And then the vacant <clears throat> part time fire marshal would be 30,000. And that's capped at 1,020 hours. You can't go more than that. Otherwise, civil service gets mad. So that came to 462. And then I, based on the overtime that we used so last year, I'm making it 465. 
There's not a lot of overtime in that department. No. Mostly when they have, they have to go to court. But I think Mike's been doing a lot of that. But court and then when they do um, fireworks at the inn or somewhere else, they have to be there for that. And then sometimes they get called out during calls, to pe fire calls, depending on, you know, if it's a structure fire or something like that. Okay? That's, that's I think, when Gary got paid out. Compensated absences. So, yeah, that was big last year was Gary's, or current fiscal year's Gary's. Next year would be Marion's. Marion's payout is not, not, not nearly even in the ballpark. So. No, no. And what I do is I ask them to give me a realistic idea of how much time they think they're going to have left so that I don't budget for all of it because mm -hmm. sometimes we like to use it before we go to. Uh, equipment, so he is requesting a new vehicle, which we were supposed to get two vehicles in the current budget, and we cut one of them because mm -hmm. we did. Um, so he's asking for the, yeah. the new vehicle. The one that we currently have, he expressed to, to Vic and I, is in pretty bad uh, condition. Also, the new copy machine. Their copy machine right now, when you print on it, it's leaving residue. It's being cleaned and serviced, but it, it's just an older machine. They've had it since 2015. Um, so that would be off state bid, obviously. And then they're also budgeting for um, different office furniture for the new location. So I don't know if you've seen the building inspector's offices, but I think Alex's desk is being held up with coffee cans, so they're at budgeting a desk for him. They need additional shelving, file cabinets, conference table, dehumidifiers, um, a refrigerator, and fire extinguishers. I did suggest there is a records management grant out there that the deadline for is the end of this month. I did suggest they, I put them in contact with your grant writer because I, if successful, the shelving, fire cabinets, map racks would be all covered underneath that, and that's totaling almost $10,000. Fortunately, we won't know until July or August if the grant gets awarded or not, and it is a very competitive grant. Uh, I actually sit on the grant council for that, so. But should we be spending money on that before they move out of here? Well, you got, if, if you're definitely going to do this, you have to budget for things that they're going to need. Okay. And since we're not budgeting in the budget for the work to be done at the Gosweiler building, I don't want to have to make up even more. Okay. That's my thought. Um, why are we not budgeting the work? Because we really don't know what the numbers are going to be yet. I mean, we could stick a, a number in there, but we're not going to know probably for another month. Where would we pull it from, though? If fund balance. Okay. If need be, we would pull it from fund balance. Okay. You have a healthy fund balance. It's not it's a scary fund balance because you can't legally have more than mm -hmm. a certain amount. Um, but if something were to happen, you guys would be fine. Okay. Well, what happens if we spend money and then we get anything? <laughs> you can't. Some grants you can't do that with. The good news is, is that we would know if we got the grant before it came time to spend the money because we have to do all that work down at the building. You're not going to be moving in there till probably this time next year, okay. or or late fall, early winter. I don't know how fast we're supposed to be getting a schedule from the yep. consultant soon. Yeah. Um, this grant. The deadline's the end of this month and would be awarded either July or August. Oh, so, we'd have to so we would we would know before it's time whether we got it or not. And that's if he makes the deadline. It was a kind of a last minute thing I threw at him. It's a very very hard grant. Um, Do we have so the storage for this this stuff? We wouldn't buy it beforehand. All right. You have a whole. We would have a whole year to buy, you spend the grant. So we every timeline we're set. Perfect, if everything falls, if all the dominoes fall in place. Um, and then, I don't know, do you have anything else about his grant, his, his office that I can pull for you? The cell phone's going up because you're adding another guy. So we have to add another cell phone. So, oh yeah, the uniforms. Let's talk about the uniforms. So he had, right now they get, um, 400 a person. They want to increase it to 500 a person. I told him he would need to justify why, because we'd have to amend our handbook and all that, which isn't a big deal, but we'd have to justify why. So he provided me a breakdown with um, different costs 
Jeans are $30 to $50 each. Button down polo, $25 to $55 each. A belt, $30 to $40. Winter coat, $60 to $150. Light coat, $60 to $100. Rain coat, $50 to $100. Work boots, $50 to $250. Work gloves, hats, socks. So it would be $500 a person. He only has in here, though, for three people, so we'd have to make it four because of the fire inspector. If you want to go up to $500, otherwise you stay at $400 where you're at now. Wait, even with the part-time guy, we're going to provide all the stuff? Mm -hmm. Only seems to have. Yeah. Sorry, Mom. So I need an answer on that. I would, I would just say it. increase it. They increase go it. through the stuff on the job sites. Mm -hmm. It's closed where I click for them. He would explain okay. in the details on that. So we're going to make 416 2000 Yeah, 500 each times four guys. The girls don't get, I mean, I could buy shoes. <laughs> and then we decreased uh, repairs a little bit because if we get a new vehicle, the thought is that we wouldn't need as much in repairs. They had asked for um, 2,500 and Vic and I brought it down to 2,400. Because you still have to do the oil changes and the regular maintenance and whatnot. Okay. And a lot yep. of it will be covered with a new car warranty and now. Yeah. Uh, vital records, that's the expense that matches that vital statistics revenue I, we talked about earlier. And now we have Mr. Wyant. Rob Wyant. Rob Wyant to the podium. Rob Wyant to the podium. <coughs> He had put in all your mailboxes one of these folders. So if you haven't gotten your mail yet, this down. Oh, you put my old neighborhood on I didn't get the rose, so I got a cut. <laughs> you didn't what? I didn't get a rose, so I <laughs> Too bad. It was a nice rose. It was very pretty. It's my husband was like, My husband was like, I got you flowers. I'm like, no, bud. <laughs> Only there's the word bridge in here. I'm good. <laughs> You're all set? Hey, good luck. Do it the same way. I think it's easier, so right? You read mm -hmm. it off. And I'll answer any questions anyone anyway has. Okay, so personal services, the first one. That's just Rob and Sheila, and that's contractual. Um, I'm just going to scroll down. Is there anything that looks big that stands out? Everything. Uh, his maintenance of building going up eight thousand dollars. Rob. That's the work you're going to do around the highway garage now that it's officially security ours. Security lighting, I think, the LED, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and upgrade the uh, security cameras because yeah. they're pretty old, so we wanted to upgrade it so our video is actually also going to the police department as well as all the other buildings. Gasoline obviously went up. We're anticipating it going up as well. Mm. We don't pay any of the use tax on that, but we still pay a base, so it's less than yeah, right pay. Now, our la so to put it in perspective, uh, June last year, uh, we were paying 251 for gas and 229 for diesel. That was our cost. Now we're at 284 for gas and 307 for diesel. So diesel almost went up like 80 cents a gallon. <clears throat> So then um, the next personnel service is Rob's. Um, go ahead. I'm sorry. I was just highlighting the big ones. If you want to go. So 
So the next, the 5110.100 is um, the rest of Rob's department, not including him and Sheila. Mm. <clears throat> Obviously, it's hard to justify this to an exact number because you don't know how much snow or ice or overtime he's going to have. So I take an average over the past two years and then add the contractual rate to it. So that's where we got that number. Um, your blacktop is going up, and that's because of oil. Mm -hmm. yeah. Petroleum. Petroleum. And then that negative 112, that's where, we, as, as I said earlier, there's that matching revenue for the chips. We decided to zero both of them out and then do an actual um, uh, an actual recognition of when it comes in. So just so, Vic, you've probably never heard, I don't know if you've heard of CHIPS before. So CHIPS is a state program that's given to us through the state. It's like kind of like a, a yearly grant, so to speak. So usually we average like between 130 and 170,000. So we use that consistently for road construction, drainage projects, or paving. Okay. Okay. It's supposed to be upping it this year, I think, too. Yeah, we're going to be at like 184 or somewhere. Which is why we're not going to put a dollar figure in because it's so hard. It's yeah. so hard, so we're just going to recognize it when it comes going in. Up, going down. So, whatever that number will be, will is, it'll, be. It, it'll be what it is, but that will be the additional black topping that Rob does. Um, so, the equipment that is your the machinery equipment's any equipment we purchase. So this year we're probably going to be getting the uh, the tree truck, the bucket truck, mm -hmm. that we as we discussed, and then we will also be purchasing the new sh street sweeper, which will be coming out of the reserve fund. Yeah. Which we usually put in about fifty thousand into reserve fund for equipment, and then fifty thousand in reserve fund for road construction. God forbid anything happens, i.e., a bridge mm -hmm. or or that type of thing. We Thank have the money to cover it without you know have to offset the budget anymore. And the reserve fund transfers are later, the last <coughs> item in your budget, so we'll get to that later. Right now, we have, uh, because the cost, uh, we, we just purchased one truck, so that you'll see those costs that actually escalate, yep. No, it's it's gonna go up. We just bought a, we just bought a truck, well, it was you, like 100 you ordered it in like June. Well, no. The right. one truck we, we just bought the small. He's talking about this year spent currently. Yeah. Right. We're, right. It hasn't been fully. Yes. Right. But didn't you order a truck in the summer and it's not here yet? Well, right? that would be the tree truck. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. So it was supposed to be here for this year's budget, but just with the nature of everything that's going on, it got pushed to next year. So whatever we don't uh, spend this year, obviously, we'll be going back to the general fund. So gas. Received. That's the actual gas that goes into the um, gas tanks up at his his uh, shop. So that, of course, is going up. But there is a revenue side for it, which is that transportation that we talked about earlier that we get from all the other departments in the two municipalities. When we write checks to ourselves that Tara loves so much. <laughs> um, And then, so that's pretty much the highlights. I mean, everything else is kind of self-explanatory. It's mostly because of petroleum and gas is increases. Um, I don't know if there's anything else you see that stands well, out. Salt and, so also, salt and liquid calcium, we're going to have to increase that too because we get charged with a fuel surcharge. Until those gas prices go down, uh, we're going to be hammered with those fuel surcharges from anybody that's delivering to us, whether it's drainage pipe, catch basins, probably any contracts we get into this year, any any concrete companies that come in and do curb work, I'm sure we're gonna be hit with surcharges for fuel with everyone now, across the board. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the sweeper repair, you won't have that anymore, right? Well, we're gonna keep, we're probably gonna keep the second oh, sweeper, okay. honestly, it just as a, as a secondary sweeper, but only because we're getting more and more roads. We're like, we're gonna be at 50 plus miles here shortly, and we try to sweep them twice a year so if you're doing lane miles that's like 200 lane miles a year that we're trying to sweep so if we have that secondary then we don't have to put so much abuse on the on the first one how come such the big decrease with the street lighting that's, that's not that's, him. Right. that's me okay that's not him. so the answer to that is because we if you remember over the past two years we were transitioning into led lights okay so I decreased it based on our current usage. We, 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 we've been saving because of the LED transfer. Hopefully now every light in 
the village should be LED. Yes. If you have a light that's not LED, please let me know so I can find out why. I would need the light number. I have a list of LEDs just for you. Okay, <laughs> well get me those so I can import them. Thank you. Um, so yeah, that's why I dropped it down because okay. based on our current usage and past usage, I think 150 should be sufficient. Nice. Thank you. Okay, anyone else, anything else Rob? Good. Thank you. Thank you, Rob. Thank you for All the right. time. See you guys later. Have a good night. You too. You too. So zoning board is kind of self-explanatory. Um, not saying really changing. Advertising went up a little bit, but that's because of your, <coughs> the local laws that you did, referring more things to the zoning board and planning board than before. Bye, guys. Bye. See you later, Rob. Have a good night. Uh, planning board, the secretarial went up based on our conversation we had before with Claudia. We're going to do a stipend, and then she'll be doing work, her minutes from home rather than on our time. And that stipend is consistent with what Gail was getting? No, it's but, consistent with what Jessica gets for the zoning. Okay. So that's, Gail was here for so many years. She was getting three and change. So that's meeting. why it was so high. That's why it was so high previously. Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, other than, uh, so the only thing that I, that's in this budget that's not planning board led, but it belongs under there because it's a comp plan, yeah. I, I put 40000 I don't know what your guys are doing. I don't know what you think you need you we did 60,000 last year you've only spent five so far on Valerie we, yeah but Valerie's doing a lot of work now so mm -hmm. that's I don't so know is 40 six, not a lot is 40 I too much it's 40 perfect 40 is probably good okay. because um, there's gonna be more work she's doing over the summer with public hearings and, and the like on the plan that we're working on okay. so so should we put more I I'm in you're okay with 40 yeah, yeah. okay 40 is good okay good chair people all right, and then come your employee benefits, which are, you know, a lot of it is contractual based on, and, and you know, percentages based on salaries. Retirement system, that is what it is. Uh, service award program, that's your low SAP. We have, we just got the bill. I think you guys just signed it for last abstract, so it will be on your March report. Mm -hmm. uh, FICA's. Seven and six point six five percent of your salary, so there's nothing to do there. Workers comp went down because um, workers comp's based on salary, and Gary left. And that was a big salary, so mm -hmm. uh, unemployment is a cap per employee as well. Same with disability. Your health insurance is going up because um, you're adding a full-time employee. And you had an employee who got married, so that changed it from single to. Uh, family and there's someone who has we're anticipating a status change as well so that's that so that would also change dental obviously not as much because your dental is very inexpensive and that's it that's all I got for you for a general fund questions comments overall thought Concerns. Anything before it is we what move on to the, no. the big boys? <clears throat> no, I just, what's the extra 50000 in indebtedness for? That's the road improvements. That's road improvement. Last year he didn't put any money in that because we were trying to stay as low as possible. Uh, we were doing, you know, our thought was to do 50000 a year. The past couple of years that's where we've always been cut, cutting. Um, we're hoping FEMA's paying for Ridge Road. We don't know for sure, I don't think. So that's where it would come out of. All right. You know, and if, some, if a road does damage elsewhere that is not going to be FEMA eligible, we need the money there to pay for it. So that's what the reserve funds for that. What's currently in the reserve for that? I did not bring that with me, but I can go get it while we switch over. No, no, no. Oh, okay. It's on the front page of the report you get from me monthly that shows okay. you our money oh, I'm gonna look. To, the, to the penny. So it's right on that front page. I, I realized as those words were coming out of my mouth that I probably should have had that with me, but no, I couldn't question. bring everything. All right. So as Mickey and Jason are sitting, I'm just going to remind you, mostly for Vix because this is new to him. 
the two, so Mickey's department consists of four taxing areas. There's two water areas and there's two sewer areas. The two big water, there's a big water area and a big sewer area and a small water area and a small sewer area. A lot of things in Mickey's budget is divided by four or divided by two, depending on what it is. And he splits it. Between so, the, right. The so if a guy works 40 hours a week, 17 hours gets charged to the big water, 17 hours gets charged to the big sewer, three gets charged to the little water, and three gets charged to the little sewer. So the Flat. Water. And then over time is exactly whatever he uses it for. Whichever like of those three, four he's in. Yeah, whatever four he's in is what the overtime gets charged to directly. Um, a lot of his maintenance, like his gas and his vehicle repair and his office supplies, all that is 50-50 between the two big ones. In your one small water, there's only 58 people who pay for that. So whatever your tax levy is, you divide by 58, and that's what it is. So it's very expensive. Now the overtime rate is mm -hmm. the same regardless if it's the big or small. Yeah, time and a half. Yeah. Or double time, depending on right. where it falls into the how often. Um, in your small sewer, there's only 133 users. Your big one, there's 4,000 and change. And then the water is ad valorem, so that's based on your assessment. So that is the quick 411 on that. So you're going to see things that are duplicate, but they're really not, because if you add it all together, it gives you a better idea, but it's divided amongst four or two. Okay. That makes sense. I would yep. Except for revenue. Revenue is specific to the, to the four areas. There's really no revenue in sewer. There is in water. But the expenses are divided by four or two. And some are specific just for the just for that one fund too, which we'll explain. Okay, that's a quick Cliff Notes 411 on how Mickey works. It's a it's a difficult budget to do because you have to divide it or in half or by four. And CJ was in for all four of these, so he can chime in when needed. So we're gonna do consolidated water first because we're just gonna go in order. Sorry, I know when we do it individually, we do small ones, but they've got it already in order, so we're just going to go in order if that's okay with you all. So, the meter water sales that's exactly what you guys bill out three times a year to everybody in your water area for their actual water usage. Based, as you know, or you may, you may not know, or you may not remember, we were unable to relevy water last year. So we came in extremely under budget because of that. So this year we should be over budget because we will have the water money that we didn't, we weren't allowed to do last year. Some, a lot of, believe it or not, a lot of people don't pay their water bill. They like to have it on their property taxes because then they can use it as part of their write-off. I am not a tax expert. Sarah, Tara can give you a little bit of insight on that area. Um, but people, if they add it to their water bill, then they don't pay it. And then some, I don't know, makes their property tax higher and something with Taxes. Limited to ten thousand dollars anyway. I don't know. Right. Do that. So uh, that's so we're get, so we raised that by fifty thousand based on that anticipation. Uh, water inspection fees. So every time uh, Mickey or someone from his department, somebody is putting a house in or changing their their line, they get charged three hundred dollars for them to come out and inspect to make sure it's done properly and up to code. So he's estimating that we are going to be doing 17 of those. Um, a lot of that is driven by your building moratorium as well. So you're probably looking at more once that expires in June. Yeah, most of it's going to be up at the uh, yeah. Well, if, yeah, and if you look at the history, we did 9,000 last year. We did 6,900 the year before. We're only at 3,000 this year. Yeah. So. Uh, water penalties, that's the late fees on the water payments. Again, we came under budget last year because of the lack of being able to re-levy. This year, we're already almost at our budget, and we haven't even done the re-levy yet. Wow. So we're going to be pretty good, sitting pretty good there. Uh, community development, obviously, that's the grant that we just got for the hydrants, so we're not budgeting for that because we finished that program. Interest, same as general fund, blah. Meter sales, that ranges between 300 and 450, right? 450 is the highest one. 
depending on what size meter you're putting in your house, and that usually goes hand in hand with inspection fees, but occasionally someone has to replace a meter. Yes, if it freezes over the week, winter, mm -hmm. if they're not home, then we have to replace it, we charge it. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. And that's really all the revenue for the consolidated water area. So expenses, I'm just gonna do the payroll row one because well, I basically explained it to you already. So what I did was I, um, I actually take all 10 employees, I break it down, I take the overtime average over the past three years, because again, you cannot predict overtime for his department, because in addition to going out to plow or ice the different infrastructure he has, he also has water main breaks. Which I am well aware of. <laughs> Which we're well aware of. Yep. So the overtime is a guesstimate. The overtime is always a guesstimate. We've been pretty good with our guesstimates thus far. Um, so that's why the number's there. That's there. And he has 10 employees full in, in his department, by the way. No compensated absences because no one's retiring. You all know that Mickey has decided not to retire. Does everybody know that? Thank God. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. But I told you all. But... <clears throat> Mickey um, will be here for another two years. So, actually, you know what? Mickey will be here for another three years. <laughs> well, definitely two, because I wasn't doing a one-year contract extension. So. <laughs> um, so I don't know if you want to go line by line like we just did, or just pick out the big ones. Lab testing. CJ says that we have to test for like a thousand million things. <laughs> it's about it's right. Not him. It's, it's the no, it's not him. But CJ is the expert. For those yeah. of you at home. CJ is the expert in water, so he is These up guys to are date. The expert. I just help. Yes. See, but yes. I'm so we had to increase that because of that. Wasn't there something? There was some special acronym that we used the other day. PC three. PFOS chemicals. PFOS. Ah, I was so close. I was nowhere near close. So that's going up ten thousand to accommodate for that. Um, thank our government for that. The obviously gas and you know is going up. Mm -hmm. That you'll see the matching over in the consolidated sewer. Mm. The badge meter service agreement, that is going up because we need a new program, correct? Yes. Yes. The program we have is not, is not supported by Badger anymore, so we have to upgrade. Do you understand what that is, Vic? That's where they go around and they do the remote reading, right? Yeah. readings remotely in the truck, and then we have the. Uh, yeah, it's an RF reader. reader. Shop that generates the bills, and so all that has to we're not changing the meters yet. That's coming down the line. <coughs> but that's going to be a lot of money because we have to buy every house in the meter. So, uh, we, we're going to try uh, testing some of the meters over the summer. If you go. Uh, when, when I talked to the guy, he said it's 99% accurate. Okay. That doesn't need to be taken care of. And he said that the if there's more people living in the house, the meter goes faster. Okay. So they would be your older meters compared to somebody that's only two people in the house. Okay. So he said everything should be good the way we have them right now. And by the time the time for testing to see if they are slowing down, we're going to have to replace them all. Okay. Because mm -hmm. they're not going to support our reading system anymore. Okay. So. so the only other thing that stands out is the fact that we're not bonding, we're not budgeting for a bond payment or bond interest. And the reason for that is. The bond that we took out in 2017, Mickey has completed all of the work that was taken out specifically for the consolidated water, and we have funds remaining that can only be used for the work it was bud bonded for or to be reduced the debt. So until it's exhausted, we're going to use that to pay the debt down. So because of all that, this is actually your, your tax levy for your consolidated water has decreased. Um, so I was really happy about that. Yeah. Yep. Any other questions about consolidated water? Water? Voila. Now. Okay, so Amder Park, that is up in, um, off of Scunny Monk. That has 58 users, 50 are, water six. Yep, water six. 50 are actual users, eight are vacant lands. Um, so the same thing with here, the water, 
we're actually decreasing based on actual usage. Um, but penalties we have increased because there are people who don't pay their water bill timely. You get a nice generation of uh, generating re revenue from this fund because we have uh, rent. We have a cell tower on one of the pieces of infrastructure up there that we rent space for. So that's about 1900 a month. So that helps offset some costs. Um, other than that, this, this budget, uh, you know, the salary, of course, is what contra is contractual. It's a fair distribution. We, we don't, you know, we don't want the two larger funds to fund everything because it should be fairly distributed, which is why it's the set, like I said before. Um, but you do have your principal and interest on this for that $500,000 ban that we took out for the work that we are going out to bid for this Friday. We're not going to the opening the bid Friday, right? Well, we're opening the bid, I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah, we're opening the bids on Friday. Are we expecting any more expenses this current, like a lot? Because we're half of what we budgeted. <clears throat> that would be me. No, a lot of the stuff that we're gonna replace is in that bid for the bond okay. that we did. Okay. So that's why there's a lot more. So you have some O&M that you have, you have a lot of O&M you haven't spelled yet, but that's yeah. planning on being done. Um, lab testing, mm -hmm. that's the same thing. It's, it's water, so it still has to do the testing that's required. So that's really it. It's a small, very, very small taxing area. It's sad. 